What's good, family? It's me, Coach 67 Sports TV. Shout out to the awesome and amazing LDBC. Lions Den Boston community. Before we go any further in the video, like the video, share the video. Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you can be alerted anytime I post any new videos. Uh, this particular video is about uh, the DeMar Hamlin uh, situation. And, you know, before I go any further in the video, you know, I'm praying for him and his family. Uh, <clears throat> his condition has improved considerably. You know, he's talking. Uh, you know, he's been responsive. Uh, even with that being said, you know, y'all keep praying for him. Uh, keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, I made a video <clears throat> like much earlier in the week about this particular situation, but uh, me posting that video, I think it was it would have been in bad taste because I was really out of character because uh, this entire situation upset me. But Skip Bayless doesn't seem to have that same type of restraint. All right, now this is the tweet <clears throat> that he tweeted about the particular situation. All right, I was talking to my brother, Jared Eleven Green, Monday night. And I was watching the Rose Bowl, and then I came home, came here, and he called me, and he was like, bro, did you see what happened with DeMar Hammer? I mean, with the Bills, no, he said, did you see what happened between the, uh, the Bills and the Bengals? I'm like, no, bro, I didn't watch Monday Night Football. Like, what happened? He said, do you know DeMar Hammer? And I'm like, yeah, I know him. You know, he's a safety for the Bills. He was like, yeah, he was like, well, he made a tackle on T. Higgins, and then he got up, and he just fell backwards, just fell like a tree in the forest, and he collapsed. And I'm like, what? So he sent me the video, and then thereafter, he sent me a tweet that Skip Bayless tweeted. Now, understand this, you know, I've never been a huge fan of Skip Bayless. I remember when uh, he was on Cold Pizza on ESPN, and I always thought that show was pretty garbage. And I used to catch it from time to time. Uh, but then eventually uh, him and Stephen A. Smith was on first take. And you know, it was a pretty good show. I think they were able to kind of bounce off each other. And that's the reason why they had the success that they had. And at one point uh, during the course of the show, uh, Stephen A. Smith was out on vacation, I think, in Shannon Sharp. Uh, Shannon Sharp uh, sat in for Stephen A. Smith, and that's how like they kind of gelled. They had good chemistry. So when Skip Bayless got his huge deal with Fox on FS1 for Undisputed, he wanted Shannon Sharp to come with him. All right. So <coughs> at this point, Shannon Sharp has trumped uh, Skip Bayless by leaps and bounds. But before we get to that point, let's look at the tweet that. Skip Bell is made, you know, right after the situation with DeMar Hamlin. Now, grant you, DeMar Hamlin made a tackle on T. Higgins, and he got up and he collapsed. He had a cardiac arrest. You know, it was, uh, like, it was a dire situation. People thought that he was going to literally die on the field during the game. But this is the insensitive tweet that Skip Bell has made. No doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of the game. But how? It's late in the season. A game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. And at that point, when I saw that tweet, you know, I pretty much, I lost it because, you know, like how could you be this insensitive? Now, he has a reputation for being just a scumbag, uh, you know, an A-class jerk, you know, extremely insensitive, you know, Watching first take, I, I used to hate. Now, it's one thing to critique the game, but for him to call like the players all these ridiculous nicknames, he used to talk about Chris Bosch so bad. You know, call him Bosch Spice. You know, he used to talk about Terrell Owens and, and LeBron James and Russell Westbrook and Dwight Howard. It's like he would talk about all of these professional athletes like you know, never in your wildest dreams could you even be a fraction as successful as the Chris Bosch or Terrell Owens or Dwight Howard or 
any of these guys. So just because you're a journalist, it does not give you the green light to get on television every day and run down these grown men, these professional athletes. You know, it's one thing to critique their performance, uh, you know, whether they played well or they didn't, but for you to kind of make these personal attacks and personal insults, and he doesn't see it that way. I mean, he's arrogant, he's egotistical, you know, he thinks he knows everything. You know, when you watch him on the show, at certain points, he thinks he's smart enough to be a general manager in the NFL or the NBA. And I'm like, man, you are delusional. I mean, just talk about, you know, the game, talk about sports, but don't sit here like you to know all, be all about all of these different sports and these different sport topics. So he thinks he knows everything. And when people like Jalen Rose and Richard Sherman actually put him in his place, you know, at one point, Jalen Rose, <coughs> excuse me, pulled up his, his high school stats. And, you know, the way he would get out, get on TV and talk about Chris Bosh and LeBron James and Russell Westbrook day in and day out, you would think he was literally like an all-world basketball player. When, when Jalen Rose pulled up his stats, you know, it was like, wow, like he was garbage. You know, water pistol pee. Now, at this point, you know, it's no fun when a rabbit has a gun, you know. Uh, hey, that's out of bounds. You're out of line for that. But yet, you get on TV every day, you talk about these men, you criticize them, you run them down, you trash them. And, you know, it's just like the things he says on television is ridiculous, you know. On one hand, you know, you talk about uh, LeBron James. Now, LeBron James, you know, despite what you might think of him as a player, you know, he's arguably one of the, we're going to say top five greatest NBA players of all time. But yet, on the opposite end of the spectrum, somebody like Tim Tebow, even though he won the Heisman Trophy in college and he and he won national championship at Florida, you know, he's a fringe level, well, he was, he was a fringe level, uh, like, NFL starter. And yet, he, you talk like this guy's the greatest thing since sliced bread. But more importantly, so it, it shows a track record with him, you know, not considering anyone else, how these people have families, uh, they're grown men, you know, they play a game for a living. You get on TV and you just constantly run these guys down every day. But this tweet about DeMar Hamlin, who like literally could have died during the game, the most important thing at that time is this young man's his health, his safety, and his well-being. And the fact that he almost died on the field during the game. But yet you're insensitive to that. Now, I know a lot of his, a lot of people that came to his defense, you know, the thing they look at is the, the last point of the tweet. You know, basically the outcome of the regular season seems so irrelevant. However, in many instances when people lead with something, you know, that's what they – really think and really feel. So the fact that you put no doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game. But how? This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome. Who cares if it if, if it's even for first place, place in the NFC between the Bengals and the Bills? Who cares? Who cares about the outcome of that particular game? Because this young man's life is in, in a balance. You know, he could have potentially died on the field during the game. And you worry about the dog on outcome. Who cares? Who cares if it's even for first place in the AFC? You know, it shows how insensitive he is. And basically, he doesn't care about these players. Now, like I said, his, you know, people that's defending him, they look at the last part of the tweet, but who cares? Like, for you to actually sit there and compose this tweet and actually tweet it, it shows that he really doesn't care. So he's been under fire and attack, rightfully so. And me personally, I think he should get the same treatment that Kyrie Irving got. Even though all Kyrie Irving did was tweet a link to a movie. Now, <coughs> excuse me, nobody has been critical of Jeff Bezos. Nobody's been critical of Amazon Prime, who actually, you know, they... They're the company that's carrying the movie. But Kyrie Irving got all of this 
like harsh treatment. And essentially, the NBA made him jump through hoops. Joe Sy made him jump through hoops, you know, for that particular tweet, even though he didn't even say anything in the tweet. But yet, Skip Bayless has been extremely insensitive. He didn't care about Tamar Hamlin's safety, his well-being, any of those things. Now, he's under attack. Let's see what FS1 is going to do. Let's see if they're going to actually take him off undisputed. Let's see if he's going to get fired. Let's see if he has to go through sensitivity training, so on and so forth. So if he doesn't get Kyrie Irving type treatment, then it's a shame and it's an outrage. And it shows that from a racial standpoint, it's still a huge double standard in this particular country because there's absolutely no way he should have made that tweet. And the fact that uh, FS1 hasn't pulled him off the air yet is, is a travesty of justice. So hopefully, you know, something is done with the Skip Bailey situation. And Shannon Sharp, you know, the way he's been disrespecting him on Undisputed is ridiculous, you know, because the situation where, you know, he talked about how, you know, Shannon Sharp was jealous of Tom Brady and he, you know, he it, it's ridiculous. Shannon Sharp is arguably the greatest NFL Titan of all time and he's in the Hall of Fame. But the fact that he could tell that the Channel Shop was supposed to be his friend. It really shows that, you know, he's a, a jerk. He's a scumbag individual. And, you know, Shannon, like, like, how could you tell me this, Skip? I thought we were friends. Now I'm spinning forward to this particular situation. You know, Sterling Sharp, who Shannon Sharp old, old who Shannon Sharp's older brother, he had a similar situation. It wasn't to the severity of the Mar Hamlin situation, but he done a, laid on the field motionless and he tried to explain and skip the severity of the situation. And Skip doubled down on his, his stance and his position, and he said he refused to take the tweet down. So it goes to show you that he's extremely insensitive. So let's see what Fox and FS1, let's see what they're going to do with, do with this particular situation. Are they going to leave him on air or not? So is he going to have to go through any sensitivity training? Is he going to have to go jump through all the hoops that Kyrie Irving had to jump through? Hopefully so, but I doubt it because it's a – it's a huge double standard when it comes to these particular things. But we'll see. He deserves to get Kyrie Irving treatment. Uh, far worse because Kyrie Irving, you know, what he did was not even really that bad. But in this particular instance, this was hard. She really could have cared less if DeMar Hamlin would have died on the field during the game. And lastly, let's just see what the NFL is going to do in regards to provide some type of financial support to DeMar Hamlin and his family because – Based on this situation, it's going to be a long road to recovery. And the likelihood of him ever playing again in the NFL is extremely highly unlikely. So that's it for this video. Like the video, share the video, comment in the comment section, subscribe to the channel. It's Code 67 Sports TV. Uh, shout out to the awesome and amazing LDBC. Have a blessed and phenomenal evening. Peace and blessings.